Hi folks, we're coming to you live here from Michiko Studios. My, oh yeah, we have a live audience. Socially yeah. distance, of course. My name is Gene Pritzker, this is Dan Cooper. We are the co-directors of Composers Concordance. Uh, those of you who might not know us, it's been, the organization's been around for how many years now? 36. 36 years. And we have our associ associate director, Seth Fusen, is here as well. Seth is here as an associate. Any other associates? Oh, no. <laughs> we have like 45 associate directors, but only one is here. That's fine. Uh, we have this concert that has been on the books for a while, and, uh, you know, we had to cancel it and reschedule it, so we're happy that we're able to do it today, even for a small, but I think a very great audience, so we don't mind that at all. And for you folks up out in the interweb. <laughs> yeah, so the, this is, this, the program is We the Whole People, and it is in tribute to the uh, whole effort, starting from Susie, Susan B. Anthony, the whole effort for women's suffrage. And we have a whole range of uh, compositions here, which were written especially for the event around this theme. And uh, many of the um, composers uh, here uh, in the audience are participating as musicians. And um, we have great vocal works and instrumentals uh, planned here. Yeah, and a couple of the composers are not here. They're, I think both of them are in California. And they are they are on Zoom. And they're going to talk. And you're going to see them. They're on Zoom. Wait, is, is both of them there or just Madeline? Do we, do oh, they're going to be there. OK, we're going to find. There's going to be two composers on, in the virtual world who will talk about their pieces when we talk. So uh, we have, uh, believe it or not, this month we have four concerts. We had just had one. It was oh, we had Conga Mania on the first. We have this one. Then we have uh, Clarinet Motion coming up on Monday in New Jersey at William Patterson University. So far, everything's not being canceled. So we're doing it. And on the 29th, we have our 11th annual. So it's 11th year. Composers play Compose Marathon, where we get about 20, 25 composers to play their own music at Drome in New York City. Lower East Side, and so far that one's in the books. We have the 50 person capacity in the club, 20%, I think. So we're gonna do it, it's gonna happen. But uh, yep. as always, we wanna, we wanna thank all the amazing composers and this incredible ensemble. We'll introduce you to the musicians soon. And uh, the composers are gonna speak about their, their works just before they're played. Uh, actually, for um, the first one today, yeah. he's gonna speak after. Oh, okay, yeah. and with one exception, that'll be the first piece. But I can say the title? Sure. It goes with the title of the program, as We the People by J. Elfenbein. And uh, before we play his piece, uh, our singer, that's a soprano for the evening, Jessica Bowers, is gonna, is gonna come up. And she is gonna read the original uh, Susan B. Anthony, some of it, thing, <laughs> thing, sort of thing, speech. Okay, sorry, enjoy the concert. So this is uh, the first couple paragraphs of the speech that Susan B. Anthony made in 1870, uh, 1872 after she had been arrested for voting. So she says, friends and fellow citizens, I stand before you tonight under indictment for the alleged crime of having voted at the last presidential election without having a lawful right to vote. It shall be my work this evening to prove to you that in thus voting, I not only committed no crime, but instead, simply exercised my citizens' rights guaranteed to me and all United States citizens by the national constitution beyond the power of any state to deny. It was we the people, not we the white male citizens, nor yet we the male citizens, but we the whole people who formed the union. And we formed it not to give the blessings of liberty, but to secure them not to the half of ourselves and the half of our posterity, but to the whole people, women as well as men. And it is downright mockery to talk to women of their enjoyment of the blessings of liberty while they are denied the use of the only means of securing them provided by this democratic Republican government, the ballot. to this song. Of your song, okay. So Jay has asked me to also read his lyrics. What I feel about our people, we all, well, some of us, Americans are lucky that we get to live here. Wow, we're free. But now I'm thinking, fear has poisoned us so badly that we seem willing to give up all our freedom 
just to feel that we are safe. From what? It's time we all remember what our country stands for, the whole people. I'm not talking about the freedom to be a selfish pig and put us in danger just because you want to prove you're free. That's not freedom. It's stubborn ignorance and bullshit, you see. You bought the lies, then fears and resentments build and build until you've lost your soul. It's time we all remember what our country stands for, the whole people.
Well, it's Jay Elton Barnes, we, the Peoples. <laughs> and uh, Jay, do you want to say something about your instrument that you're playing, perhaps? Yeah, well, I'd like to say thanks for listening, and uh, I hope everyone could hear that. Thank you very much for a great um, job from the entire ensemble. The instrument that I was playing and am featuring, and I've made an important part of my improvisational world here and compositional world, is a marvelous version of an ancient instrument. Yeah, uh, it's a Renaissance and Baroque instrument called the viola da gamba. But this is an electric version of it made by a great cat out of um, uh, Arnhem in the uh, Netherlands. And his company is called Ruby Gamba. And this is an electric, solid body, electric bass viola, uh, viola da gamba. And uh, I do a lot of different kinds of work on that. And I play all kinds of modern music on it. I also play Baroque and other kinds of music. And uh, thank you for listening to my music. <laughs> Great, thank you, Jay. We're going to move on to a piece by uh, Seth Baustet, and it's called Marginal Capacity, which Seth is going to tell us about because I don't know what he's talking about. Seth! <laughs> uh, Damien, our wonderful percussionist, was calling it Marginal Sagacity, which uh, I really liked. <laughs> Uh, it's the same idea, though, really. Unfortunately, the title is actually uh, a kind of a pessimistic title. Uh, when I was thinking about the theme of this concert and as Jean and Dan said, it's been percolating for a while, this concert. Um, I, I was just kind of questioning, especially this year, what is the capacity for uh, human beings to really care about one another? And uh, you know, when I wrote this piece, I was feeling like it's marginal. <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, that's not to say that this piece is a bummer, though. Um, but I, I do take a kind of a... Um, a little bit out of the American Minimalist book, there's some repeated patterns in the piano that kind of represent just the looping patterns of, of human behavior, you know, and, and uh, I hope that we learn and move on and, and uh, move forward as humans, and I hope you like this piece. <laughs>
by one of our composers who is not here. And uh, it's called Haley Quinn Brown by Madeline Byrne. And Madeline, will you tell us about your piece, please? I would be happy to. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. yeah. Great, great. Well, first of all, I don't know if she's in attendance or not, but um, I wanted to say thank you to Marty Brinsko, who I think might be attending. She was one of my first music teachers, and if it wasn't for her, um, I wouldn't be here doing this. Um, also, I want to say thank you to Jean and the Composers Concordance for um, offering me this opportunity. And uh, another thank you to Jessica Bowers, our wonderful vocalist, uh, Franz Hagel on trumpet, yep. and Seth Bustad on piano. So thanks very much, folks. Um, oh, one out of three. I decided to, I decided to do a piece on Haley Quinn Brown um, when Jean approached me for this project, because in doing research on the suffrage movement, I found that there were a lot of African-American women we were very active uh, in the suffrage movement, often at great peril to themselves. They were more likely to be thrown in jail um, and treated very harshly by the police than were uh, white women. And um, they've basically been written out of history. And so I wanted to take at least a little bit of a step to um, remembering somebody who made a great contribution. Her name is Haley Quinn Brown. She. Uh, was the daughter of, uh, her parents were, were slaves, had been enslaved before. She is the first woman to graduate from Wilberforce University with a master's degree in science. Uh, she spent a lot of her career working as a teacher in plantation schools and, and really impoverished places, built them up, and she ended up, through a course of events, becoming a world-famous public speaker, and she would speak out about um, racial injustice and about the suffrage movement. And so I really liked this speech that she gave, and I'm gonna go ahead and read it. I'm assuming you can't see it well enough to uh, have me do a screen share, but I'm gonna go ahead and just quickly read through the text, which is, is pretty short. And what I liked about it is there's a really nice uh, tension between this very thoughtful and careful introspection and um, a call to action, a great deal of energy. So her speech is, let us remember that we are making our own history, that we are character builders building for all eternity. Women's horizon has widened. Her sphere of usefulness is greatly enlarged. Her capabilities are acknowledged. Let us not ask, what shall we do with our newly acquired power, but rather, what manner of women are we going to be? We stand at the open door of a new era. For the first time in the history of our country, women have exercised the right of franchise, the right for which the pioneers of our race fought but died without sight. So the beginning starts kind of quietly and in a reflective manner. Um, there is uh, what I call a let us remember motive that the trumpet intones. It's sort of intended to be like a clarion call, a call to action. And then it does become much more energetic, much more active. And I really wanted the piano to represent um, just boundless energy, um, like a ferocious amount of energy. And it changes tonalities, it shifts around a lot. And the voice, I wanted to be very steady and strong, kind of floating on top of that. So um, I hope you all enjoy. And here's Haley Quinn Brown. Thank you so much. Just a couple of uh, quick corrections before we get started. Um, I first want to thank Madeline for writing such a 
beautiful, evocative, and emotionally resonant piece, but she just got a couple of the credits wrong only because they were the original performers. So this is indeed um, Jessica Bowers on uh, uh, singing today, but this is the brilliant Wayne Dumaine on trumpet. Yeah. And <laughs> I am Jeffrey Burleson. So we'll just to keep it correct, uh, credit credits, and uh, without further ado. Thank you, Madeline. Great piece. Thank you, Madeline. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. We're, we're going to go now to a piece by myself. 
Home. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, well, so I, I like the word we. It's just a nice sounding word. So I call my piece we. And you know, of course it could mean anything, but for this concert, it means we the whole people. So we're gonna, we are gonna play this piece for you now. <laughs> Now this piece is very complicated, so if you feel like dancing, please don't dance. It's not true. <laughs> Unless you really want to. Everybody ready?
on the percussion, playing the man and the trumpet, rocking it. Thank you guys. Woo. Told you it was hard. I didn't see anybody dancing. You guys are right. You shouldn't have danced today. Come on, dance. Oh, so now we've got something, something unexpected. Something completely different. So our good friend Jeffrey Burleson, who came in uh, a little late to the concert, but uh, I know he's a great composer, so I asked him, like, do you got nothing for us? I don't say that. I said, do you got anything for us? Or did I say do I have nothing for us? I don't know. I said one of those things. To do with the subject matter. And he did. He had something. He's going to tell you about it. Okay, well, you want to this one? more or less. Sure, why not? What's more or less. More or less. So, more or more. Um, the uh, following arrangement slash mashup you're about to hear is something that I created in June uh, in the midst of the Black Lives Matter protests uh, catalyzed by the murders of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and so many others. Um, so I put together this piece and recorded it and put it on YouTube on, on Juneteenth. And the first piece uh, you'll hear is uh, by Charles Ives and was written in 1908 and bears the remarkable title, The Anti-Abolitionist the Anti Abolitionist Riots in the 1830s and 1840s. The piece is in part, I think, a testament to Ives' grandfather, who was a very uh, noted and active uh, abolitionist. So this was part of the family consciousness and history. And I wanted to give it a, a kind of redemptive ending, and so I uh, created a segue and an arrangement of um, improv on uh, the protest gospel anthem, We Shall Overcome. And so that's basically the story, and here's the piece. The anti abolitionist riots of the 1830s and 1840s, We Shall Overcome. Yes. That's the full title of the piece. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much.
and just took piano lessons like last week. It's uh, amazing, <laughs> amazing. Uh, we're, oh, we're, we're gonna go to another composer who is not here, but she's in California, enjoying the sun and the fire. Oh, not the fire. Oh, come uh, on. Oh, <laughs> our associate director, Deborah Kane. Oh, she's on our associate director, it's true. Hi, Deborah. Deborah. Deborah wrote a piece called The New Colossus, and she's going to tell us all about it. Well, I'm very glad to be part of this conference, first of all, in such a meaningful way, and it's great to join with you in this message, everybody who showed up in wonderful ways. Um, the New Colossus is actually part of, not a part of it, it is the inscription on the Statue of Liberty. Uh, the poem is actually longer, but I just did the inscription on the Statue of Liberty. And uh, in fact, this, this hall seems appropriate for our time. Um, although I had a violin in my very ordinary place, but I don't know what that would do. Anyway, um, a lengthy text speaks for itself. Um, and so take it away, perform it, and you know, go for it. Madeline's the other girl from California. 
I'm really not doing the song playing up to <laughs> Luckily, it's live and on the internet forever. Thank goodness it didn't go out on the air then. <laughs> so, uh, the, uh, yeah, Cooper, this is uh, the Ballad and Vocalese. And uh, yeah, I wanted to uh, feature a, a nice lyrical movement followed by a more festive sounding piece to celebrate the achievements of, of those who came before us and their triumphs. And um, this will feature some of the outstanding musicians we have in the ensemble. The Ballad will feature an improvisation by Del Jay Elfenbein on the Gamba. And then the vocalese, of course, are wonderful uh, mezzo soprano Jessica Bauer and Wayne Domain uh, improvising on the trumpet as well. Uh, and uh, Damien Rathman, I just want to mention, holding it down here. He's at the far end of the room, but it's just yeah. amazing what he's what I've been hearing here. So thank you, yeah. Damien. All right, hope you enjoy. And he's an oh. oboe player. And I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna try to play the the alto flute part here. Yeah. Yeah. In his spare time. In his spare time.
instead of doing called America 2, T-O-O. Because this is my point. And this is by our good friend, David Rosenblatt, who, uh, I don't know, he's not online? I think he's like, he, uh, he took an anniversary vacation. And a little too serious. A little too serious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. I'd like to actually give it up for our conductor, Charles Coleman, who came in. The conductor is it. I mean, none of us actually look at him, but he really helped. Oh. <laughs> Terrible thing to say. Uh, thank you for joining us though in, in the in the in the space on the inter thingy webby in the thingy. And I'd like to thank our video. Director James Lane. You can't see him, but she's seeing what he's seeing, and he's making you see what he wants you to see. I don't know what I'm saying. Here's America 2. Uh, the lyrics are by somebody I can't say because Dave's going to get sued or something. I don't know. So, they're beautiful lyrics. I think it's a poem. And we're going to... Uh, Dave, if you're watching this, I hope you're having a nice vacation. Say hi to Melanie. Uh, I'm getting too personal. Let's, uh, let's wrap this sucker up. Here we go, America 2.
Coming to you live from William Patterson University, the clarinet motion. 7 p.m. Monday, come on this uh, great panel. You'll see a show you'll never forget. Or you will. Yeah. 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 Wonderful. Yeah. Awesome, man.